So here we've got a chapter on isomers and stereochemistry. Uh, first, just talk about isomers. Isomers, for two compounds to be isomers, they've got to have the same overall chemical formula, same number of each type of atom. And this comes in two varieties. And the first type that we're going to spend far less time on are called the constitutional isomers, uh, also called structural isomers. So, and these guys have a different, what we call, bond connectivity. So, for example, if I look at an alkene here and compare that to cyclopropane, find that these both have the formula C3H6. Uh, but the bonds, you know, the atoms are connected in a totally different pattern here. Do I have a straight chain of three carbons and a pi bond? Or do I have a ring of three carbons and no pi bond? But the bond connectivity is completely different between the two. Those are constitutional or structural isomers. We'll contrast that with what the bulk of the chapter is about, and that's called stereoisomers. And these may be a little bit newer here. So, but stereoisomers, in contrast to constitutional isomers, have the same bond connectivity. What's going to be different is the three dimensional arrangement of the atoms. So, and you guys have seen these before, most commonly in cis-trans isomers. And you guys saw those in both alkenes as well as cycloalkanes. So, in an alkene here, so we have cis-2-butene and we have trans-2-butene. So, and your carbon-carbon double bond is not free to rotate. So, as a result, your arrangement, your 3D arrangement of the atoms can be different. Are these two methyl groups pointing 60 degrees apart or are they pointing 180 degrees apart? So, and that's your big difference here between cis-2-butene and trans 2 butene. So if you notice, they got the same bond connectivity. It's four carbon chain. Uh, in both cases, there's a pi bond between carbons two and three in both cases. And so the bond connectivity is the same, but that three dimensional arrangement of the atoms is different. We can also see this in cycloalkanes, like in cyclohexane. So if you've got two substituents coming off your cyclohexane in this case, and whether they're two identical methyl groups that I've shown or two different substituents, I don't really care. But if they're on the same side, both wedges or both dashes, that's cis. So, but if one's a wedge and one's a dash, they're on opposite sides and that's trans. And so cis-trans isomerism here, again, possible for, uh, as an example of stereoisomers, same bond connectivity, different three-dimensional arrangement of the atoms. So it turns out the second variety of stereoisomer here is gonna be isomers that have what's called a chiral center. So, and this is probably new. So let's take a little bit of time to clearly define what a chiral center is and how this plays a role in stereoisomerism. So a chiral center is a tetrahedral atom. That means it's going to be sp3 hybridized. And I say atom here. Most of the time we're going to be talking about carbon. This is organic chemistry. But it technically doesn't have to be a carbon atom. But the key here is it's going to have four different substituents. And that does not necessarily imply four different atoms. You might have a chiral center that's bonded to four carbon atoms, but one's the carbon of a methyl, one the carbon of an ethyl, one the carbon of a propyl, one the carbon of a butyl, for example. And that would still be a chiral center. So one thing to note, some people also call chiral centers chirality centers or asymmetric centers or stereogenic centers, uh, all synonyms for chiral centers. I'll probably uh, just stick with chiral centers most of the time here. Uh, and the reason we bring these up is uh, if you have a chiral center, there's a real good chance you are a molecule that's going to have a property called chirality associated with you. And there's an adjective called chiral. So and in this case, chiral refers to a compound and its mirror image not being identical or not being superimposable. So in this case, we say that chiral compounds have non-superimposable mirror images. So when we call these two different versions, these two mirror images, enantiomers. So in the same kind of context, we use the word twin. So if you are a twin, you have exactly one other twin. Same thing. There are only ever two enantiomers. So chiral compounds are not identical to their mirror images, and their corresponding mirror image would be their corresponding enantiomer. Uh, we'll contrast this with achiral compounds in a little bit, and we'll find out that for an achiral compound, it and its mirror image are identical, perfectly superimposable. So that's kind of the big distinguishment here. So chiral compounds, again, have non-superimposable mirror images we call enantiomers. So and I've given you an example down here of just such a compound. So, and the carbon I'm highlighting here is the chiral center. It's bonded to four different groups. So it's bonded to the carbon of a methyl, the carbon of an ethyl in green, a chlorine in red, and a hydrogen in blue. So and here I've shown kind of the mirror reflection of the compound on the left. Uh, shown it on the right here uh, as its reflection, and we'll find out these are not the same. They're not superimposable in any way. So and I might try and take this compound on the left, so, and I might try and rotate it out of the plane of the screen here and rotate it 180 degrees to see if I can 
superimpose it with the molecule on the left. And if we do so, we'd have a methyl group coming down on the right. We'd have the ethyl group going down on the left. So, but you'd find out after rotating 180 degrees that your chlorine would actually be in the back and your hydrogen would be on the wedge position out front. And it would not superimpose with the original molecule at all. So these two compounds are definitely mirror images, but they're not superimposable. And so we could describe either compound as chiral and they would be enantiomers of each other. So let's see how this fits into the greater context of stereoisomers. So now that we know what a chiral center is, we can talk about stereoisomers that have these chiral centers. So when it turns out if two compounds are stereoisomers, they're going to fall into one of two categories. They're either going to be enantiomers or diastereomers. You can see that even your cis-trans isomers were technically considered diastereomers here. So your enantiomers, are, first of all, are mirror images. So and you're going to find out that these have chiral centers. So we just saw an example on the previous slide here. So and in that example, we had chlorine as a wedge, hydrogen as a dash, methyl on the right, ethyl on the left, so, and its corresponding mirror image. So we found out these are not superimposable, so, and are related as enantiomers. So, turns out you can also have stereoisomers that have chiral centers that can be diastereomers, but you've got to have multiple chiral centers for this to be possible. For example, so let's say we put a chlorine there and a bromine there. So, and on the other side here, I'm going to put a chlorine there and in the dashed position, a bromine there. So, and it turns out these compounds are stereoisomers. It's still a five carbon chain. Chlorine is attached to the second carbon in from the left. Bromine attached from the second carbon in from the right. So the bond connectivity is the same, but it is a different three dimensional arrangement here. But they're not even mirror images. And that's what a diastereomer is. A diastereomer is a non-identical, non-superimposable, so, but non-mirror image. So if two compounds are stereoisomers, they're either mirror images or they're not. And if they're stereoisomers and mirror images, they're enantiomers. But if they're stereoisomers and not mirror images, they're diastereomers. And we'll come back and visit diastereomers a little bit later here. Suffice to say though, we've just provided an example here with multiple chiral centers.